Hello and welcome to Keys TV News, live on keysnews.net. I'm Tom Rowland. Bosses at Coronation Street have suspended the actor Michael Lavelle after he was charged with 19 sex offences. The 48-year-old actor who plays Kevin Webster in The Soap is accused of raping a child, indecently assaulting a child and sexual activity with a minor. The actor will no longer be appearing in any episodes of the, of the uh, soap pending the outcome of legal proceedings. He is due before magistrates in Manchester on the 27th of February. New government figures show that the number of rough sleepers in Manchester has almost doubled in the last year. The street count conducted by council offices in November found 27 people spending the night on city streets compared to 15 last year. Homeless charities have confirmed the growing figures of rough sleepers in Manchester and the number of care packages given out being more than double this year. It is thought that the welfare reform set to be introduced in April could exacerbate the problem. Keyes News met up with Marco to discuss his experience as one of the 27 rough sleepers in Manchester. When I first became homeless, I seemed to think that I'd be able to sort out another place quite easily and it didn't turn out that way. I spent three quarters of a year wandering around the streets, having to ask people for help because I couldn't support myself financially with the, the benefits I was on, which were being reduced and I was having problems with my benefits because I didn't have a place to live. Over the past year, I've found it really difficult just functioning through not having enough money to eat and having clothes stolen through not having anywhere to put them. Since being rehoused it, over the weekend, I've been able to get a decent night's sleep and I'm starting to try and rebuild my life. Feminine Purpose founder Alison Leavesley is reaching out to University of Salford students in her quest to end violence against others, starting with an end to violence against women. Rachel Hesselhurst reports. Apologies for the uh, technical difficulties there. So now we are now joined by Alison Leavesley herself and Zulfi Hussein to talk more about violence against women. Hi guys, thanks for coming in. Hi, so Alison, you. you had this vision to found Feminine Purpose. So what is Feminine Purpose and what <coughs> was your motive this idea? So Feminine Purpose actually came to me. I was asleep and woken up at about four o'clock in the morning and given the message I had to do Feminine Purpose. An uh, epiphany almost. Yes, yeah. and that's how my life works. I am actually a, a reverend, I'm an interfaith minister, okay. and, and I live my life divided, di divinely sort of guided. Um, so I was given this message and I was told it's around questioning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that definitely needs to happen. We need to ask a series of questions. Uh, so I'm gathering people from all sorts of different professional backgrounds to create those questions. Um, of how do we bring this change that is so desperately needed within the world. Um, we have so much of the media that gives permission in a way mm -hmm. for this kind of um, violence against women, violence against children to continue. Now Zulfi here, you're the founder of the not-for-profit organisation uh, Global Promise. So how are you helping uh, with Alison's feminine purpose? Well, Global Promise, uh, we have a number of themes including connecting and building communities and we do a lot of work both uh, locally, nationally and internationally. Mm -hmm. And the idea really is about um, trying to raise awareness and educate people uh, and to really stop this whole uh, malpractice, if you like, and again, about women again, <coughs> you know, violence against women, because it's not acceptable in any culture, in any religion, in any nation. Uh, and in order to put a stop to it, we really are trying to raise that awareness and educate people around it. Now, Alison, uh, I've heard that you, that you actually want to work with the students from the University of Salford. Mm -hmm. So how are you planning to um, incorporate their views and ideas with your founding principle, as it were? Well, this has to be aimed at young people because that's, young people are going to bring out the change for the future. Um, and, you know, so, so initially, being filmed here today, yeah. um, also I've had a lot of help from the students in the media department that are creating a film and we've been working together over the last few days to create a 10 minute film which will go live on Tuesday um, and also I'm looking for students to build the portal to build the web um, the website mm -hmm. that will be used and also them to support the, the process of asking the questions or creating the questions and then working with me and working with Feminine Purpose to, as part of a, a bigger event on the 21st of June, which will be live engaging all universities around the world, looking at 
the questions that we will you know, create. Just uh, very, very quickly, how important, in your opinion, do you think Facebook and Twitter is, and RSS feeds, um, you know, for these sorts of things to um, expand your organization's um, motives and ideas and opinions, you know, in a way? How, yeah, how important do you think these you know, social networks are? I think Facebook and, and, and other social networks are wonderful. Um, in if they're used properly, obviously. Yeah. Um, so for me, this will help. I will, you know, be using Facebook a to promote the film, but also to create the question, uh, to create some of the answers and get people involved. Young people engage with Facebook all the time. In fact, we're going to use Facebook yeah. as part of the yeah. launch on the twenty first of sure. June. Uh, Fan at Work TV is uh, works so and operates twenty first of, of June. June is the actual date. For it this. is, and that will be. Um, it will go through Facebook and create a live event globally. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Thank you. The Metrolink service has now been extended to include the area of Joylston. The 3.9-mile extension serves eight new stops, although the official opening had been delayed by seven weeks due to problems with a new operating system. Passengers can board at uh, Jorsden and arrive in the city centre within 20 minutes, from where the service continues through to Bury. When the expansions programme is complete in 2016, Greater Manchester will have the largest tram network in the UK. Now, have you ever seen Tom Cruise showing off his tricks in the film Cocktail or The Bar Wizards? A flaring competition uh, took place at Revolution in Manchester in aid of charity. Adam Washington reports. From as far as Dubai to the cocktail bars of Manchester, some of the world's best bartenders competed against each other to become the fast flaring champion of 2013. The competition was held at Revolution at Deansgate Locks in Manchester, where money was raised for charity. Uh, fast stands for this year, it stands for the Flare and Revolution Club experience. Today's event is uh, going to be raising money for Cancer Research and Make-A-Wish. We've got a um, flare comp with some of the best flares in the UK, if not the world. Flare is uh, the art of throwing bottles around on a bar, like Tom Cruise style in a cocktail. The event's been running for about a year. We did one last year in the middle of North Wales. Um, we dragged everybody there, did a bit of camping. It was a good event, and then from the success of that, we decided to put on the shares, but we did it in a bit more of a viable location. I think the competitors, uh, I think it means a lot to them. There's, there's quite a competitive spirit within bartenders, so uh, I think they all want to win, but they all know what the event's about. It's about having fun, making money for charity. If we achieve that, then, yeah, it'll be a, a big quality day. We'll have achieved our objectives. 20 competitors were whittled down to eight finalists where prizes were awarded to the best three. Well, Flair is about entertainment, entertaining the customer while making a drink, the man uh, manipulation of many objects to create an entertaining bar atmosphere. I've been flaring for around four years on and off. I uh, just started, you know, picking up a bottle, started a bar job, someone showed me this and then it's addictive, it gets to you and you always want to do better and do better tricks. So there is a lot of competition today, but I, I feel pretty confident. I mean, it's, it's good that everyone's come out. So it's good against competing against some better people because it gives you more experience. Adam Washington reporting for Keys TV News. Traditionally, when you think of cheerleading, you think of American movies, but actually it's becoming a growing sport in the UK. The Salford Sirens are currently training for a national competition, as Sophie Yates reports. They've been training since September and now the Salford University cheerleading team are facing 132 other universities at a national championship in Loughborough this month. New members joined at the start of the year and the team have had to work really hard to make sure they are ready to compete at such a high standard. I really enjoy training with the Salford Sirens because we have so much spirit and the training sessions are always so fun. Um, at the moment, the competition is getting really close, so the training sessions have been intense and a lot of people are nervous, but still um, we are having fun and everyone's spirit is up and the motivation is really high. Um, I'm not particularly nervous for competition. It's my first competition, so I'm really, really excited and I can't wait to get there and just have so much fun on the team and win this. Last year we won. This year we're trying to win again. However, it's a... Uh much bigger competition this year. More unis going there and more unis stepped down to our level, so we'll be compete 
it, it's going to be tough. Um, however, after today's practice, I believe in our team uh, because they work really, really hard. They listen to me and the routine starts looking better and better. We have only two and a half weeks left and sometimes they're not turning up and sometimes they're not listening, but I think they are amazing athletes and um, I, I, I just believe in them. It's going to cost the Sirens nearly £3,000 to go to competition. So today they've been here at Tesco raising some money by packing. The university is willing to pay for half of the competition fees, but the cheerleaders still need to raise money themselves, otherwise they cannot compete. With their deadline fast approaching, the Sirens will continue to try and raise as much money as they can. The competition is due to take place on the 23rd and 24th of February. This is Sophie Yates reporting for Keys News. And now it's over to Thomas Deegan, who looks ahead to an exciting FA Cup weekend. Thanks, Tom. Uh, in the Europa League last night, Liverpool travelled to St. Petersburg. However, following a 2-0 defeat, they face an uphill battle to progress into the competition. Uh, the return leg is on the 21st of February. We welcome back the FA Cup this weekend. On Saturday, Rovers travel to the capital to take on Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. Oldham Athletic beat Liverpool in the previous round, but remain without a manager, and currently the lowest-ranked team left in the competition. They now play host to Everton at Boundary Park. On Sunday, Man City take on Leeds at the Etihad Stadium and Wigan are away to hit the Huddersfield, who are now managed by former Man United player Mark Robbins. And speaking of Manchester United, Monday they will be at, be at home followed by Premier League side Reading. Back to you, Tom. Shrove Tuesday at the Black Dog Ballroom in the Northern Quarter is uh, to see a different your average pancake making tradition. Renee Bissahong reports. Here, a special occasion means that everyone is a win in a eat as many as you can pancake eating competition. Before competing, everyone must sign in an indemnity form. Even pancake eating is a dangerous sport. After the construction of 100 pancakes by 10 competitors, JB Mecca was victorious. Uh, I'm a business analyst working in Manchester City Centre. And why are you here today? I was here to enter the pancake eating competition. Um, I saw the advert in the flyer and I thought it'd be a good laugh, nice e way to spend the evening and free dinner. And uh, how long did it take you to uh how many pancakes did you eat and how many minutes? Um, I think the amount I ate was 10 and I think they said it was something like 4 minutes, 38 seconds. And what would somebody who is in business who want to enter a pancake competition? Well, you know, you've got to have high aspirations. You want to hit the top of the pancake eating world and for me this is a stepping stone to greater things to come. Okay, thanks. This is Rene Bissohan reporting for Key News. Valentine's Day is traditionally recognised as being the most romantic day of the year. Many will have celebrated it yesterday. Our reporter Charlotte France took to the streets of Manchester to find out more. February the 14th, commonly recognised as St Valentine's Day, is celebrated in many countries around the world, although it remains a working day in most of them. The day was first celebrated in the Middle Ages. By the 15th century, it had evolved into an occasion where lovers expressed their love for each other by preparing flowers, offering confectionery and sending greetings cards. By the 19th century, handwritten valentines have given way to mass-produced greetings cards. But what is Valentine's Day to the modern day romantic? Um, I think Valentine's Day is a lovely day for people that have a partner. Um, I don't, so I'm not really fussed by it. But... Well, we've just been over to England and we've gone back to Ireland now and we're going to celebrate Valentine's Day as usual. This was a trip for my 65th birthday, which I enjoyed. We'll be celebrating Valentine's together this year. We'll be going for a meal. It'll be a nice chance to spend time together. Um, I'm single this year, so it's uh, not a big day of celebration. So it seems Valentine's Day means different things to different people. Let us know what you think on our Twitter page, at Keys News. Charlotte France, reporting for Keys News. 
that's all from us today. Don't forget you can now watch Keys TV News live every Friday at 1.30pm at keysnews.net. Also, you can now follow us on our new Twitter account at Keys TV News, where you can get in touch and let us know stories you think we should be covering. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.